Yeah. Okay, well, we're out here with my Nuzzle podcast. I don't know what episode it is, but who are we with? Jordan Donato. And okay, now the owner's like, oh, they have the same last name. We are cousins, and the, the Asian cousins, not the uh, Alabama cousins. Our so, dads are fraternal twins. Yeah, so technically, we, like, we're like pretty close, I guess. Yeah, but, I like uh, to think so. Okay, so you all, like, well, tell us what you do. Tell us, like, did you go to school? If so, where did you go to school? Uh, yeah, I went to school, Queen's University. Oh, Queen's Class boy, of 2020. Eh? Mechanical engineering. Oh, okay, it STEM, STEM. Fucking, it was a time. Okay, wait, I, okay, just wanted to double check if the audio is good for the fans. Hmm. Okay, so, so you went to Eng. How? Yeah. Tell us how Eng was for, uh, for you. Ooh, it was a <laughs> tough time for sure. Like, went into it thinking like engineering is the way to go. Well, who, who modeled that idea for you? Is that you or was that like what made you want to do Eng? Definitely just I guess School peers parents like they all just kind of pointed me towards that mm -hmm. And I didn't really like think of give it too much thought. I was just like hey, this is what everyone else wants Sure, let's do it <laughs> So like, tell us more about how was Eng at Queens. Like, okay, first of all, you're pro you're my first guest that went to full all like that went to university in person longer than it than like six three months four months. So tell us how. First of all, how was your first year experience at Queens University? Amazing. Okay, okay. So what residence did you have? Victoria Hall. You you rate it? You like the? Yeah, it was like the biggest. Uh, residents on campus. I think we had like 500 people. Oh, tell us a story about the your beds. That sounds so bad out of context. <laughs> uh, my roommate and I, basically, the night before we left for Thanksgiving, uh, we just got drunk in our room and we're like, hey, you know what's a great idea? Because Step Brothers yeah, is yeah, the yeah. best movie on earth. We're like, we're gonna make bunk beds. <laughs> and so, we basically got our two metal bed frames and a roll of duct tape. Put it all together. That, just duct tape, eh? Duct tape. The Put it all together. The coming in. And uh, stacked them on top of each other. And it worked. We had so much room for activities. <laughs> this fucking guy, eh? Like... That's we, illegal, bro. That's, and, that's nuts. And we took a picture of it with me, like, laying shirtless on the bottom like this. And we're just... We sent it to our Don and was like, is this allowed? We're like, hey, by the way, this is like Jordan and Cam. Yeah. And she's like, well, there's nothing in the books that says you can't do this. What a vibe. What but, a vibe. But at the same time, I didn't see this. And we're like, <laughs> beauty. Beauty. I might not so, wake up tomorrow, but beauty. We went to bed and I put a lot of trust in that thing. And I woke tape. up the next morning. You literally put that much. Yo, if tape, any duct tape companies want to sponsor this podcast, more than welcome. Yeah, man. But with residents, what, like, would you recommend, obviously you can't pick, right? It's not like. But it's like a lottery system, right? For the way Queens use it for the residences. Yeah, like how it works is you put preference for yeah, the yeah, type yeah. of room you want. And then you, you do get all these like questions almost like zero and stuff. say on like where you are. But there's some residences that are exclusively like this type of uh, style of room. Yeah. So if you choose like that style of room, then you'll probably end up in like, yeah, one yeah. of like those residences. Because I remember I was with you because you didn't know till August and we were in Toronto and you kept checking your email of what residence you wanted to get. Yeah. Then you ended up getting Vic. Yeah, Vic Hall is like one of the oldest. Then, did it even have AC? It didn't. That's it tough. Didn't. Did it have we heat, had windows. Though? We had heat, heat? Oh yeah. We I had think heat. legally every building in Canada has to have heat, right? Maybe. I'm not too that sure. kind of makes sense because I, I don't know. I, I would hope so. Yeah. But, uh, well, tell us all this stuff. So, how how is engineering at Queens? Like, is it very, uh, we, let's t try to take down some, like, some perceived, preconceived notions about engine in general or something. Uh, engineering in general. It's hard, I, right? Yeah. Oh, any program's hard. Like, oh, it okay. It doesn't matter what this, program We found one that in. doesn't have a security complex. Uh, it's like, that. whatever program you go into, man, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, things only become easy when you're passionate when about you're, it. And you're used to it too, right? Yeah. And obviously, like, people can be gifted and, like, for them, I'm They like, excel fast. Well, not everyone here is uh, Sasuke. So, some of them are so <laughs> Oakley's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's hard. 
And uh, the thing is with the engineering program, it's all sort of looked over by PEO. What's that? Professional Engineers of Ontario. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. So, like, no matter which school you go to, you're basically getting the same education, in yeah. my opinion. Like, is that's it, just... Isn't Black opinion. University starting an engineering program? Yeah. Yeah. They are. Like, Good I think it's 2022. The They're going to start, like, the fall... That's that's guys, so but that's exciting. This is another thing I want to debunk. I had my other friend Josh. He was also he's also an engineering at McMaster. I don't understand this because I'm talking to you. So no, you didn't start watching anime till your last year of engineering. Yeah. And this is another thing. So okay, I know how you say every program is e- is difficult in their own ways, but let, if we're being realistic here, I feel like en- Eng is a pretty rigorous program, right? Yeah, like you have a lot of hours of class. So. That, but you don't play League of Legends though, right? No. So, usually the like, stereotypical co- setup for like Eng students is League, Eng, and Anime. But you yeah. only you, you went into university with none of those addictions. Only yeah. Eng. Only Eng. But then you left with at least, no, you left at, at least with an anime addiction. Yeah. Because we, my, my brothers and I got you into Naruto. Right? Would you say, did we get you yeah. into Naruto? Yeah, oh, for sure. So we got you into Naruto. And for all the fans that don't know what Naruto is, Naruto is easily the big three anime. It's One yeah. Piece, Naruto, Bleach, and these are, these enemies are pretty like you can't finish it in a day. It's like something you, like it's a three. It's a, it's a it takes at least half a year to finish, and you finished it in how long? <laughs> like, so I skipped. You skipped all, fillers, I skipped, right? Skipped like most of the fillers. Yeah. Uh, and it took me like almost just over three months. That's four crazy, months. bro. Okay, first off. How and you started watching other enemies right after that, right? Yeah. So yeah. how how you think no? So what other enemies have you watched? Oh, Demon Slayer. Oh, I have. That one's I got, awesome. I kind of got into that. Jujutsu Kaisen. I is need like to get off into the charts. I love Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, I watched My Hero. Oh, yeah, I like that. Very I, good. New seasons. This uh, Attack on Titan. Oh yeah. Back on Titan. <laughs> easily top three anime. Easily. Yeah, top easily. Three anime. And like I I read the manga. I don't want to, bro. Oh man, like whatever. Like if you wanna just stick with the anime, like you're perfectly fine. This, and honestly, with the action sequences, because what I so how I started, I started an anime, and then I couldn't wait. I got impatient. It's hard to I'm make like, the transfer because I started watching. I I watched Naruto, right? Then I was remember I was watching Naruto. Then after Kakashi killed, when? I was like, I was like, I need to watch. I need to read the manga. So I read all the manga in one night. Then I'm rewatching Naruto. Then I'm like. If I already like, it made me lose the love to watching anime because like I already watched it. Yeah. And like you don't want to imagine fight scenes. Like you don't want to imagine Levi fighting the Beast Titan. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, read the fourth chapter. I read the chapter right after the break in Attack on Titan. I will so. say that I don't mind reading manga, but I do really love the animes. Anime Just because are you know, like it's not it's not the conventional type of stuff you see on a TV. Not. And like the way that they do things with like that voice acting oh, and all of yeah. like the music and the action sequences, Sentai. it really just elevates it yeah. to like what I think is a really good source of entertainment. Have you watched uh, a Kamega Kill? Yeah. Yeah. It's easy good. twenty-two episodes, sweet, and plot development does not exist in that series. That's all mm-hmm. I gotta say. Yeah. New character. New new episode. New character. Yeah, I agree. But uh, okay. So what? Okay. So I was I I was having a debate with my brother. See, I don't know if Philo, if not watching Philos does a big impact, but we were watching Kasami and Itachi go uh, confront Jiraiya during like Naruto. It was like when uh, Sasuke was still in the village. Mm-hmm. Not that he leaves if you're not wa- if you're still watching it, but uh. We watched it, then I was talking to my brothers, like, I easily think Itachi and Kasame can body, body Jiraiya. Ita- Itachi alone can body Jiraiya. Kasame alone can body Jiraiya. I would I, agree. That's what I think. Itachi is, like... Ta- Itachi's the god. He's like, OP. He's second. It's Mado than Itachi, bro. Yeah. Like, if we're not including the god powers that, like, Naruto and Sasuke have. Well, like, I, I was reading a meme, and they're talking about how, like, in Tom and Jerry... Uh, yeah. Tom's the cat, right? Yeah. The cat? I, Whatever. Like, the cat would pretended to want to kill Jerry the mouse mm-hmm. so that the owner because he secretly loved Jerry oh, okay. the mouse oh. and so the owner wouldn't get a new cat who would actually kill Jerry oh. so that was like their whole thing and that's like such a parallel to basically like a spoiler like Itachi and no, uh, Sasuke. Uh, Sasuke well that was easily like if you if you watch anime if you talk to any person that's into anime when they tell you about when you go to the, like when they ask you like 
oh, like, I'm at the part where, like, Itachi's about to confront, uh, Donzo. I know, when did he, when did he learn the truth? When Sasuke was, uh, it wasn't Itachi that told, oh, Don, it was, he fought Donzo, then, uh, Oba Toby came and get him, right? If you're watching Naruto, don't, don't listen to this podcast, at least for the full staff. So, Sasuke defeats Donzo, then he collapses, then Toby picks him up, right? Oh, no, Orochimaru. No, he kills, he kills Itachi, then, uh, Obito Toby picks him up, then he tells him the truth. Oh. Remember? Yeah, I that think ho- so. That whole arc, so tell me, the, like, if you're watching Naruto Shippuden, it's literally the Itachi Sasuke arc, then it's Jiraiya, then it's the pain, then it's a pain assault, like, three back-to-back arcs in the yeah. Shippuden, then that's gas. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, then, I remember watching that, and, like, your mind just, bl- and the way it's so well thought through, Mm. Then it's like, oh, that's why that's why Itachi went to the village when the Lord Thor died because he wanted to make sure everything's in check. But I thought that was crazy. Yeah, it's great because uh, to find like a regular TV series that has such like a well developed plot, mm-hmm. and, and it doesn't fall off after like season five, off, season like, six. It's it's hard, man. And like people are giving me like all these different sort of like series to watch, but I'm like. I'm happy with anime. Literally, bro. Anime. <laughs> See, I think with me with anime, it's like seasonal for me. Like same thing with my friend with country music. It's oh, like yeah. I love it sometimes, and I, like right now it's so hard for me to get into it. Then like other other like parts of my life, I'll like I can easily clap out twenty episodes in one day. It's like it's so nice outside. Like you just want to be outside. And, literally, like, when you're watching anime, podcast. like you just gotta binge it in your room, like in the dark. Yeah, and like literally pitch black. Pitch black, you know, just munching on snacks. Yeah. But like in the summer, I want to be outside and I want to do things. fishing, eh? Fishing. That's how yeah. it be. What? How is fi- how, what got you into fishing? My buddies. Really? Yeah, it's beautiful. Honestly, it's like thing. it started off with FOMO. Yeah. And then it's sort of like through other things that happened in my life I've sort of learned to appreciate the small things Mm -hmm. and you know fishing is sort of just surrounding yourself with nature Mm -hmm. with a purpose and with your boys too it's just a vibe I want to go fishing honestly fishing comes secondary to like just being outside Mm -hmm. and just like enjoying and being by the water Okay, not to segue into another thing you're also a competitive weightlifter aren't you not are you not? Uh, I guess yeah like I've sort of stop doing that just because the pandemic oh, right yeah, now true, true. but you still wait left right you still go to the gym uh i'll go to the gyms uh when they open but my future in powerlifting is questionable it was just like a brief t- thing like you just it was something aside a pa- like a passion turned into like a semi uh yeah like with powerlifting it sort of started to turn into almost like a job yeah started to it. like not enjoy it Mm-hmm. And, you know, powerlifting became such a big part of my life that I had to say no to other aspects yeah. in order to keep doing powerlifting. But now that I've stopped powerlifting, Your days I've been able to yeah. say yes to so many other things in the rest of my life. Yeah, cause you, it was and like, things that I find fulfilling and making happy. Because one, because you were, like, dedicated to it, obviously. And that was the thing, because I remember you asking, like, hey, you want to, like, get, like, me and my brothers asking, hey, you want to get ice cream? like, sorry, I'm at the gym. But, yeah. And see, like, it's it's things like that that, you know... You miss I regret out. because I've missed out on you know those opportunities but the to same, connect with you guys. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, I've gotten a lot of out of powerlifting. But yeah. you know, I got what I could. It's time for like a new chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but that's yeah. like that's a good thing to know. Like that's like, a good thing to be aware of too, right? Yeah, like to be open to other possibilities in your life is a big thing because. Mm. It's so easy to become comfortable and just... Complacent. And that's share, another thing. Like, keep yourself in that one area. Because you don't know, like... Everyone thinks... Either you have no idea what you're doing, or you think you have a kind of a guess of what you're going to do. Mm. Then, like... Because I remember when I was in grade 12, I was applying to schools and, like, careers. And te- I asked teachers, like, did you did you want to be a teacher? It's like, no, I had no idea I'd actually end up being a teacher, right? And those things where you think it's going to be your end game, But eventually, like, later on, you're going to realize, like... This is not, this is just a stepping stone to what I want to do next. Mm -hmm. And I think a huge part of that, of like realizing like, or like just seeing your life unfold is just going out there and living your life. Yeah, literally. Uh, Like you're not going to realize that you're passionate about something by like just fucking sitting up, like on your, sitting on your butt. I know. And especially like, we're still young. Like I'm not even 20 yet. Like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. Like maybe, like holy, this podcast is a full-time thing, but like, you never know what, like. You never know where your passion lies because at the end, at the end of the day, 
your fourteen year old self is not as probably it has different passions from your twenty year old self, right? Yeah, and like keeping an open mind towards those things, like exactly. If something sparks your interest, like why not try it? Exactly. Like, people, I feel like a lot of things stopping people and from a lot of people. Doing that is just fear a of failure. A lot, no, literally, a lot of people are fear a uh, fear of failing, a uh, fear of failing, right? And bro, let me tell you, like that limits you so much, cause like I said on this podcast, like I dabbled in wrestling, like I did. Like, um, when I switched to my, I switched schools into going to grade 11. I had, like, literally I had no friends, right? Then it's like, okay, like, I'm going to join sports team. So I did rugby, track, wrestling, cross country. And I, by no means I was good at any of those sports, right? But I was like, I'm making so much memories and so much things, like, so much memories. I'm experiencing so, so many new things through wrestling, through cross country, through rugby, through track and field. But even though I'm not doing, I'm not winning, I'm not doing good. Like, why quit? Because, like, even though, like, like you, some people would be like, oh, like, I don't want to do wrestling because I'm going to fail. But, like, you don't know that for sure. And, like, I, I wasn't that good at wrestling, too. But even though I, I've, I've lost wrestling matches, I still continue to do it because the experiences I took from wrestling, like, that's something I'm not going to get if I just said, no, I quit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, you just have to put yourself out there because having, yeah. you, you either feel... Uh, regret it's like you have, you rather have you rather experience failure than fear regret yeah like if you stay where you are like would you be happy if 20 years down the road you were exactly in the where same you are place, right exactly now? like you wouldn't so then why are you so afraid of change and I saw that on TikTok which is like Tobo, TikTok as place. much as you flame it there's so much educational place. purposes there is to it. there is and it's like there's a reason why people on TikTok are called creators and a reason why people on Instagram it's cool. are called like the, the stuff you see on TikTok actually is like funny comedy. Funny comedy and like you can also find a lot of like useful like mental health stuff. Literally, which is like literally. very important, which is a good contrast to, you know, exactly. other forms of social media. That is literally just toxic. Yeah. But that's yeah, like, yeah, TikTok? That's why I'm off Instagram. Yeah, I like TikTok. Oh yeah, oh, you got, TikTok. you know, why do you get TikTok. off? So you got off Instagram, but you didn't get off TikTok, eh? Yeah. Because oh. like with Instagram, it's basically a platform where everyone can become their own marketer. Yeah. And obviously, they're going to portray, like, the best version of themselves. Like, mm. the stuff you post on Instagram wouldn't be the stuff you're posting on TikTok. Exactly. And either, either or, right? Yeah. You're more vulnerable. Two different platforms. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, like, it's just a lot of toxicity on Instagram. And, like... And a lot of, oh, like, I need my likes and all that. Like, yeah. And you know what? Like, I did it as a trial. And I, I just really liked what my head, my mind was. Mm -hmm. when I was off and you know ever since then I got off in October and like I've never really had an urge since to, October eh yeah never really had an urge to hop back up I guess well it's like that it's like cold like that first two weeks of hard then after that it's like kind of easy eh yeah and it's like it gives me time to focus on like what I'm doing because mm -hmm. at the end of the day like Instagram's not supposed to be a major part of your life, just something you do leisurely, right? Well, marketing is a great, or sorry, uh, Instagram is a great marketing tool. No, literally, like, I was like, so uh, when I started this podcast, like, literally, like, talk's an app right now, and that's literally the best, like, marketing tool that's free that I can use to, like, get my platform across, like, mm -hmm. my audience, right? Well, like, if you look at the goal of marketing, it's basically to, you know, expand in a sense, your like, audience, influence someone's yeah. decisions. Yeah. It's more specifically, I guess, like, buying decisions. And, mm -hmm. like, Instagram is a platform that fosters that. Yeah. But at the same time, But TikTok time, you does know, it better. I have... I have the tendency to just, like, waste time on Instagram mm -hmm. and be angry with myself because I'm not doing the things that other people are doing. Yeah. So I just decided to remove myself from that environment. Yeah, because, uh... Well, I remember I was like, I always wanted to start a podcast, and I'm like, oh, like, ah, uh, like, I don't know if I should do it. Like, then I see other people do a podcast, and, like, the same media I consume, like I'm confident in my ability, that I can cons I can make it, and I can c make it better. So I was like, I'll make a podcast, and here I am, like eight, yeah. ten episodes deep. And like, obviously, there's the fear of failure doing that, but you know, I rather know, I rather know than not know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And at the end of the day, like in a hundred years' time, we're all gonna be buried in we're the dirt. We're all gonna be dead. Gonna give, no as long as care. I know who I am to myself and to and who my fan, like as long as I know who I am to myself, then like. That's all that matters, I guess, right? Yeah, that's courageous to just uh, be able to acknowledge that and say that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's a lot of pressure, especially, I guess, from the cultures that our parents are brought in. Oh, being Filipino, bro? Like, create the image that you're successful, but... Yeah, I did not tell my parents about this podcast. Like, 
a lot of like a lot of Filipino and a lot of Asian parents, I think, like, aren't not? really used, to, aren't really familiar with this whole digital creation, digital creator type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. What do you say? Yeah, but at the same time, I feel that they still want to support you. Yeah, with your endeavors and with like whatever you want to do with your life. Mm -hmm. And hope like most. Like I know there's some Fili some Asian parents or some pa parents in general that are more hard-headed than others. But at the end of the day, like they just want you to be ha the Those main goal is wanting you to be happy and be mm -hmm. successful, right? Well, like, you know, we are imperfect individuals mm -hmm. being raised by imperfect individuals. Obviously, there's going to be some flaws. issues in our, like some flaws in our behaviors and personalities. But that's just, what makes us human, right? Yeah, that's, that's the whole human experience. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, it's like... You gotta take him some L's to. You gotta take some L's to appreciate the W's. Yeah, like the whole point of life is just living life. Mm -hmm. Don't try to attach any sort of unnecessary baggage to that. Yeah, like if those like you don't need negativity in your life. Like I'm not gonna say it's a choice to have it around you, but like there's certain aspects that you can use that it's easier to filter than mo most things, right? I think you can certainly avoid a lot of negativity that you experience on a daily basis by one, removing yourself from that situation, yeah. but also two, like changing the framing of your mindset. My, well, mindset is everything. Like, you know when you perhaps don't get something that you want, that's mm -hmm. maybe just a sign that, you know, you it's just the it. redirecting towards what's actually meant for you. Not, and it's just that reframing. Or like when yeah. you get nervous, yeah. you have to think about it as like your body physically preparing yourself to do something extreme. So exactly. like, as anything, if anything, you should see You're being ready. nervous as being more prepared yeah because when i did wrestling and uh when i did wrestling i was like i'm nervous then i remember like my friends were like okay if that means you're ready right mm -hmm. and uh mindset like so i took a class in university called entrepreneurship and it touches on there's a fixed mindset and there's a growth mindset so a fixed mindset is like something's like oh i, I failed a test i'm not good at math then there's a growth mindset like okay i got 60 if i study if i study hard on my next test i'll get like a 70 or 80 right and Honestly, you're not gonna have a full growth mindset, a full fixed mindset, but there's gonna be instances where you get to choose like, okay, I didn't do so well on this. Am I just not good at it? Or is there room to be better at it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's healthier to have a growth mindset in some instances. Yeah, I mean like one of the biggest like mantras that I live by is uh, you live and you learn. Yes, so you so, gotta take those L's strategically. Yeah, like the whole point of life is to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, like whenever I get an L basically, I'm just like, well, you live and you learn. Exactly. No, it is what it is. What it, it, is, is. what it is. Like in order to get over the past, you need to realize that the past is over. Literally. And so like, you know, if you just, you can't be present if you're just focusing on all the mistakes you've made in the past. No, no, that's really such a mindset because like, if you like, if you fail a test and it's like, oh my gosh, like, like I failed a test, like, oh shit, then it ruins your mindset a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you gotta remember, like, it doesn't, that's like, that's not who you are. It's only a piece of you, you know what I mean? And, like, I also find it interesting that, like, you use the example of failing a test, but it's like... Life is a test. Yeah, like, you know, I guess in the school frame set, it comes down to, like, oh, like, a test is essentially, like, what it is. It's a test to see, like, your performance and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, like, in life, you know, there are no, there really are no tests. It's, it's kind of just, like... You just go. Yeah. I remember I, it was like a t in school they teach you uh, they teach you something then they give you a test, but in life it's like they teach you uh, they teach they give you a test then it, the test gives you, is the lesson. Yeah. Well, Instead like, of the, a lesson look at the history test, of like we live, school how it's structured today. It's still flawed. I it's, think that's flawed many. in the sense that they were designed to basically they were basically instituted during the industrial revolution. Yeah. Where they needed more factory workers, so they basically created school system that would pump out factory workers. It's outdated. And we sort of just, like, kept with that. Cause there's some schools in, like, Europe that, like, do have a whole different school system, school structure. And, that, like, and Europe's pretty good, like, Sweden and all that. Like, they're pretty up there and, like... Yeah. Like, if your goal is to basically, like, become a very good worker, then for sure, excel at school. But if you want students to become really good at life, you have to model school after life. And See, in life, no one sits and fucking... Does a test. ...arranged but... seatings and has prescribed tests and those scores from those prescribed tests you know determine your entire value mm -hmm. as a human like realistic like that doesn't exist like realistic when we were talking about we were talking about nepotism right it's like oh like when the like the teacher's uh when the teacher's son gets the mvp award right it's like yeah. oh that teaches you nothing it's like realistically that's a that's a form of networking and networking is a large aspect of yeah. trying to get a job well, like see how that 
that lesson of nepotism in school isn't directly rooted into the system. It just happens. However, like, it, yeah, it's, it's like just a human life nature, that happens. Yeah. And, like, that is a very valuable, like, lesson because, like, you know, in real life, nepotism is very real. Mm -hmm. And you can't avoid it. And, you know, you can fight it all you want, but well, you can just try reality. to conquer it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Life's all about fighting, you know? Yeah, it's... Life is almost whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Like, most strong believers of, like, I don't... We we're gonna get flamed, but, like, manifestation, I'm a strong believer yeah, of, like, fucking, speaking things I, into existence, bro. And, because, like I said, mindset's everything. Like, if you change the way you think, things are gonna look better. Like, if you always look at negative things, negative things are always gonna be in your life. If you look at positive things, positive things are always gonna be in your life, right? Yeah. And, like, at the end of the day, everything that I could be talking about or, like, everything that we could be talking about could be miles off the mark. Yeah. But, you know... Some kids gonna be listening us, to us and be like, this kid's spit. Like, we're, we're chilling. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I don't think a lot of other people could say that. Yeah, especially and with this pandemic, bro. Yeah, it's... And, like, obviously, the pandemic is a very tough situation for everyone, and it affects everyone. different people differently based on... Economic, you know, economics income structures. And, like, other things. And But, you know, I'm... Beyond that, in my own head, in my own heart, like, I am happy. Right. And, you know, if someone wants to criticize me for my beliefs... Like, buddy, at the end of the day it's like that's on like that's on you yeah like why you i don't take that personally yeah bro it's like just i think a lot of like i think i don't know if i said this a lot of people gra graduate high school but they don't graduate the mindset of high school because mm. like, at the end of the day that. like that like i say you graduate the mindset of high school because i remember in high school everyone was so caught up of thinking like oh like oh i wonder what that person's gonna think of me it's like should i post this it's like bro at the end of the day like those people, you're not sleeping in the same bed as those people, like, metaphorically, like, so you shouldn't care what they think. And, like, it does nothing for you. Because, like, I was, when I started this podcast, I was looking at, like, sing, like singles, like, up-and-coming singles and content creators. Like, I remember Logan Paul. He's like, oh, I got flamed when I first dropped my video. Then I was, like, so embarrassed. Imagine if he stopped there, he wouldn't be boxing Floyd today. And, like, yeah. singles, like, uh, I don't know if you're into phase, phase adapt. Phase Adapt says like, oh, this one person used to flame me. And if he stopped there, he wouldn't be one of the best content creators like on YouTube and like in the gaming industry, you know? Yeah, and it's also like, why do why do you have to like flame those guys? For Literally, doing that shit. They're like, just securing a bag, bro. Yeah, like everyone, like do what makes you happy, and as long as it doesn't like affect other people's affect others, mental or it's health not at stuff. the cost of other people's happiness, like go chilling. off, like exactly. I'll support you. Like, like I, like my whole podcast, the whole idea I want to make this podcast is like, I was listening to another another podcast. Like, the whole idea of entertainment is a form of escapism. Escapism, right? Okay. So like you're just trying to escape the problems you're going through and just trying to like get your mind off of it, right? So like I'm just trying to make this podcast like, because obviously whoever whoever's listening to this has stresses in their life or worries in their life, and like at least maybe 40 minutes they can laugh or like whatever they want to do. But like li while they're listening to this, like okay, like. They get their mind off it because I was like, yeah. like with me with wrestling, like I remember I was like, oh, I, I was so stressed about getting it, like oh, I have to do this test, I oh, I have to do this at home, but like when I'm on the wrestling match, my mind is so clear and I'm so I'm just focused on wrestling. Yeah, and that's why you gotta do sports. Like find something that you're passionate about, and that makes you happy and just do it, right? Like photography is like a thing for us, right? Yeah, yeah, got into that because of uh, Edwin. Right? Joel. Yeah. Joel was a photographer. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Edwin started picking it up, and then I was like, okay, the whole fan became a photographer. The whole literally. fan kind of just got into it. And then we were pretty good at it, not gonna cap. Like, I'm not being narcissistic. <laughs> like, like, I'm pretty, I'd say we're pretty good with our camera abilities. I look at so. it like, as I, I just, I, like, here's, here's the thing, too, why I'm off Instagram is like, when I started posting photos, like, I, on my personal account, I wasn't really, like, subjected to the whole. Like, what does this person think of this? Yeah, what yeah. does this person... But then, like, you know when you're posting your work, you're like, I'm fuck, proud this of is this. like... Like, this, this, this like I'm proud this of this, is but, like, neat. also, like, well, if someone says this is shit, then, like... Yeah, what the fuck does that matter? That's gonna suck. Yeah. But I got caught up in that. Yeah, and the so, negative side. so, you know, once I removed myself and I started taking photos again, I sort of just started taking photos of things I thought were cool, things mm -hmm. I thought were interesting, and I edited it in a way that I thought was beautiful. What you liked, right? Yeah, whatever I liked. And it's like, I don't care what... Mm -hmm. Some dude in Toronto thinks of my photos. It's just like I'm doing this for fun. If I'm taking a photo of you and you like it. That's all. That's I need. literally, literally. That's all I need. Like wh one of the greatest things I get out of photography. Wait, how long is it? Oh, like the camera's gonna shut off in like two seconds. Cause there's a 30 minute cap. I don't know. Back at it. Mm -hmm. So, 
like one of the greatest things I get out of photography, right? It's like if I'm taking pictures of like like if my friends want me to take a picture of them and I take a picture of them and they're like, oh, this this is cool, like this is fire, like no way you took this, and they're like. The joy I get joy out of seeing my friends like get, seeing a cool picture of them. You know what I mean? And yeah. that that's such a gas moment when you know you got the shot. Yeah, and like I love. So before I was kind of setting myself up as like a portrait photographer. Yeah, same. And like I still am. You know, just shoot, shooting people, but sort of after doing just like spending time taking photos, I sort of realized that I like taking, I guess pictures of memories rather literally than, rather than of people so i started to, um, my goal is i want to take my camera out wherever i go and so those two for people that are only photography photography those portrait lenses that are fixed lenses that are like the 50 mil the one he has on his camera and now it's kind of short then there's like a kit lens like the ones i am i'm using for this so usually with portrait photography you're kind of limited in the type of pictures you want and like you need uh at least for my camera because it's it's a it's a crop sensor but like with a portrait lens, you're kind of limited. Like you can only take portraits in a sense. But with this this lens, I can do whatever I, whatever I want with it, right? And I'm not trying to take, see. My whole idea is like I'm not trying to take good pictures. I'm trying to take pictures that I'm gonna hang on my wall in a couple of years. You know what I mean? That's the thing, though. It's like it's cool to take a cool photo. Don't give me time wrong. and place. You know, because when I hung but out, like my... you want to take a photo that means something. Yeah, because so when I shot my other podcast, I took I took a pictures with that with the flash on. Then it was it was trash photos, but it was so trash. It's like I'm even gonna look back at that. And it's like oh, that was a fun night, and that's yeah. what, that's what photography is. It's about capturing a moment at the end of the day. Well, like something that really like dawned on me was like I would take photos of like Models. with, with my camera, and it would yeah. be like really good, high quality photos. Mm -hmm. But then like someone will just show me like a really quick snapshot of something they took on like uh, like an Insta. Insta I've lost the word like the the camera where you take a photo and it just spits out the photo. oh Polaroid thing? yeah Polaroid instant spot. Polaroid yeah and like they'd show me a Polaroid I'm like why is it that this seemed way, way more it's way authenticity more, like, it's way more meaning, authenticity meaningful than like my photos literally it's more and I, authentic and like that's just something I thought about and mm -hmm. you know through time I've just realized that you know they're taking photos of memories while I'm taking a photo for the sake of taking a photo a fix you're taking a picture of a I, not an idea a uh, like, you know what I mean? Uh, you're trying to sell a pic sell an image. Yeah, I'm trying to sell, sell an, an image, and, like, it sort of becomes a competition of, like, who can make the coolest yeah. photo versus, like, we're doing something really cool. Let's take a photo of it now. So, you know, we can 10 years it. down the road, we're going to be, like, we were, like this memory sparked joy. And, like, I want to be able to take a photo and show it to someone. And, then right. to feel and they see the, emotion. like, authenticity on yeah, it, Yeah, right? like, I want, I want someone to feel the emotion. I want someone to ask about the story behind it and yeah, tell like, oh, that like, story. Tell us. Yeah, like, that's... And that sparks human connection. Because at Literally. the end of the day, it's like we're social beings. We all want to feel connected. Yes, yeah, sure. Well, what's another thing we can talk about on the pod? We talked about Eng. But what's something you took out of Eng that kind of changed the way you looked at life? Wait, let me pull up questions. Because I know, like, with the way me, I'm in communication. The way I look at news is so different now because, like, just like with with communications, you look, you're supposed to look at news critically because not everything on news is. Uh, we can talk about that instead. Like not everything on news you watch is true news. Like there there is some dis some biasness to news platforms, right? Yeah, it's always good to you know be be skeptical and ask questions because even if it's uh, like a news source that you trust, it's always good to ask questions because yeah. what that's going to train your mind to do is just start thinking critically mm -hmm. of everything else in your life and that's what engineering basically taught me is how to how to think critically living life has taught me why to think critically and you know putting that all together i hope i can become like a bit more wise mm -hmm. but yeah how is uh because eng like i see tiktoks like engine can is kind of like a cult what, what, what are your thoughts on that uh statement and no, I have nothing to say. I have no. <laughs> uh, I uh, engineers are very passionate about what they do. Yeah. Uh, like, at the end of the day, we're just trying to like make the program fun. Make how I see it. Make society better too. Yeah, and like you know what though, like, it wasn't until after leaving university and sort of experiencing brotherhood with my peers that I started to realize that, in a sense, they're trying to foster like not like not brotherhood because it's kind of sexist but yeah. just like a community the whole, yeah a the whole like 
community family sort of aspect of that. Because I feel engineering is a profession that's very like team oriented. And so if you can build that sort of trust between other engineers sort of in real life, it, mm. so it will carry over and allow for better working teams. And you know, in engineering, a lot of your projects are done in teams of like three, four, five. Yeah. And uh, and Chegg. Yeah, and Chegg. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, a common theme with you STEM kids. I mean, so like my issue with a lot of how the testing is done, and I mean, obviously, I'm no ex- I'm no expert in education. I'm just speaking from my own like, experience. anecdotal experiences, but. What's the point of me memorizing all of these things? If, if you, when you're making a bridge, you're gonna have like um, you're gonna have like yeah. your resources allocated. And like I understand you're gonna build like the foundational understanding of certain concepts, but you know what are you trying to teach? Mm-hmm. Are you trying to teach how to solve this very very dumbed down? realistic situation or are you trying to teach us how to think critically and exactly like, You're, are you teaching memorization or cr- critical thinking right yeah and it's like I know it's a tough balance and yeah. like my me myself I would never be able to figure out that balance mm-hmm. but you know going through the system and through my experience I can just say that I found that it it sort of fate, it was sort of biased towards memorization yeah and right? even like the problem solving questions they would basically be the same question in the practice problems or like on a test it would be the same questions in the practice problem but just different numbers yeah so as long as you memorized the steps you could solve the question really yeah and that was sort of my issue with like a lot of it hmm. so isn't your like exams really long yeah and it's like three questions isn't it wasn't yeah, your like exam- my thermo my heat not thermo heat transfer final was three questions in those three hours that's there's obviously tough. parts A, B, C, and D, that E, F, G, tough. but like, they all build off of each other, but yeah, you're Did just you kind of like memorizing how to solve this question and then just building Did off. Did you do that. that in your room? Like, not even at school, right? No, uh, heat transfer was a first semester. Oh, okay. So we did that, uh, in class, yeah. like at, on campus, but then, uh, my four, my second semester, fourth year was online. That's tough. Because of that, because that was COVID. That was, what were you, March 13th, where were you and what happened? Because I was like, and you feel in university or anywhere, that was a crazy day. Oh, yeah, like, March 13th, I, <laughs> like, I don't know if it was that day specifically, but I Friday. just remember, like, everyone just talking about it, like, talking about the possibility of, mm. like, schools getting shut it down. It was like a snow day, right? On. Yeah. And, like, you know... Uh, Cam and I, my housemate, were just like watching the, watching our phones, watching for announcements. Mm-hmm. School after school was like announcing a shutdown, and then we we're gas. just like, "Well, Queens is probably gonna follow suit." So we started packing. Yeah. And then like, you know, that was such a happened, weird experience. And so we just went home. Yeah, I feel bad for everyone who's uh, in school right now because. Oh, I know. Don't tell. Like, tell me. I'm not. My brother told me like, "Oh, you're going back in like it's August soon. You're gonna go back to school." It's like. Uh, if it's e- like, if it's online again, like I don't, like I don't. It's just a weird way. Like to put it in, to give you perspective, I m- remember almost nothing from what I learned in school. <laughs> and no, like, but I know so, but, it's memories, but, right? but I still find the university experience very valuable. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? It's that the experience of university doesn't lie in classes in the. the it lies in the experience and in, yeah, interaction and connections. Like, Everything from like grinding with your buddies, going to the gym with your buddies, oh, yeah. partying, meeting new people, trying mm-hmm. new activities. Like that's the experience for me. And COVID took all that away. Literally, and li- like uh, my brother Neil said, it's like literally, online university is literally like twenty percent of university, and it's the it's the shittiest part of the twenty percent. Yeah, I agree. That's a good statement. Yeah, Neil got him on the pod, mm-hmm. but he doesn't want to be on it. So what yeah. does that mean? Can't force people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, and so I just feel bad, like. Because even with my, I think it was like two months online. It was like it was garbage. They give you yeah, it, it was garbage, but they give you a lot of work. For me, well, because you're a fourth year engine, I was sec- I was a fourth year uni student. So for us, it's like because it was like what two weeks left of school or three weeks left of school or something. Yeah, something like that. So they were like we we're just gonna upload because sli- and we didn't, it wasn't Zoom wasn't full time right at least for lawyer. So it's like for at least the way my school took it. So we're just gonna release we're gonna release powerpoints. And we're like not gonna do Zoom because some classes did Zoom, but not the ones I did. Then, but now this year, like second year was all Zoom, and I was in. I had to make pro- 
you know how hard it is to make projects with like kids online yeah like it's not hard but it's just so like meticulous is and that, also like it's hard because that because that's that's like you said that's part of the university experience like making group pro doing group projects and stuff yeah like i guess the pandemic has really emphasized how important human connection is mm -hmm. and not in the sense of like ro what we thought human connection was before we're like if you had a really like long lost friend and you ask someone like hey do you like keep tight like keep on top with them or like you know catch up with them you're like oh yeah i send them like that occasional like happy text. birthday yeah i send them the occasional text yeah like when was the last time you you sat down with someone and had a conversation for like an hour or two like, like almost now. never but then you know during the pandemic everyone sort of started to realize like hey you know we thought we were well socialized but no but like realistically you had four <laughs> close friends and you talked to like everyone else online yeah nothing wrong with four i don't think like with friendships, I don't think you need a large group. It's quality over quantity, you know? Oh, that's for sure. But, like, also, you know, if you think about how humans lived yeah. for, like, Based the 300,000 years we've been on Earth, we've lived in, like, small tribes of, like, 10 to 12. Yeah. I believe. I'm not completely Yeah. No, no, <laughs> sources, trust me, bro. Yeah. But, like, it was something like that. And, you know, so our whole entire, like, DNA is to be wired to... Social interaction, right? To operate effectively when we're surrounded by the same 10 to 12 people mm -hmm. throughout our whole lives basically mm -hmm. but then you base but then you introduce this idea of the internet where you're allowed to interact with almost anyone and everyone it ruins the way it ruins a lot, a lot it changes a large portion of the way we socialize with each other right because it started the once social media was created it, it changes the way kids grew up because the 10 when i was 10 years old compared to the kids that are 10 year old now 10 years old now totally different experience because they grew like like I'm, I was born in 2001 I grew up with I didn't I grew up as Facebook and YouTube were starting right but these kids are growing up with TikTok and all that like it, they're so it's such a different experience because like when I grew, when I was growing up I didn't have these pressures compared to these other kids right mm -hmm. and that's so whack and that's the thing though like young minds are extremely impressionable oh yeah and now you just allow them to soak up anything and everything that's available to them on the internet like they can be influenced very easily and they don't have the critical thinking skills as like a teenager uh, like an 18 year old would have right yeah like if you think about like the idea of like here's a weird idea like the idea of child emperors throughout history oh yeah what ended up happening is like a child emperor would use a like, their, their dad would die they would become yeah. emperor at like eight years old or whatever yeah and their either uncle or like some group of advisors would just take advantage you'd of be them. a puppet yeah well, that's happening basically right now with social media companies that, and like that's other a good marketing parallel, companies. Actually. Like they're just manipulating the minds of young people Industry to basically plan. create a reality yeah. that favors what they want. Whether yeah, it be like people who want to like buy their product or their mm -hmm. services or like buy into their idea, like it's they're rebranding a person. Yeah, I, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, and like you just have to be careful. Like there was that whole thing with Instagram for children that they oh, wanted yeah. to make and everyone was like that is a terrible idea like, see, I agree, see it's such a hard idea. problem to attack right because it's like how do we go about this that's ethical and actually oh, effective yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll also say like I have no idea how to solve any of these problems no literally so you know don't don't come gas bro I'm in humanities bro people, huh? I mean I mean I mean I'm in social science I took so uh like I took a sociology course and the exam questions like solve racism like I don't know if I can solve the racism in a three hundred word essay. Yeah, like, and that's the thing, though. It's like it wasn't the actual question. It was even just though we don't metaphor. have solutions to these problems, it doesn't hurt to talk about them. Literally, because like the if we issue. don't talk about them, they're only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Literally, communication is key. Such yeah. a vital aspect within families, friend groups. Communication is key. Key. Yeah, and like Do you I watched Arrival, <laughs> and that was a like oh a very, with like Grinstics. Yeah, yeah and and like that. That movie is very sort of uh, focused on the the wind is kicking my I think I did a hot shoe, but yeah, continue. And like that movie is very focused around communication and it brings to light a lot of issues brought up like that is a result of poor communication. And you can oh, see yeah. that a lot today. And How like it's also communicate. interesting to think about whatever language you speak influences the way that you view the world. Oh, 100 percent because with those words that we'd we we'd uh developed that can't translate into other words, right? Was that kind of mm. what you're trying to say? And like, yeah, and like, 
you know, in the English language, there's a whole emphasis of like I, like I, 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 like I, yeah. am, I am that. And, like you're basically like within the language, there's this huge sense of entitlement mm-hmm. built into it, and like people just unconsciously believe that. And so like, you know, when you say like this is why communication with yourself is so important because when you say like I am bad at math yeah you are literally, literally like you're creating... feeding yourself negative uh, you're feeding yourself negative reinforcement yeah like you are entitling yourself to that negative aspect you're speaking it into existence yeah like if that's why like you know it doesn't hurt to talk well about yourself mm-hmm. and like it can be seen as n- like, po- like, uh, but, like toxic positivity yeah. but at, there's an at extent the end of the day, right? yeah like you need to believe in yourself. You need to be kind to yourself. Literally, you're, you're your own best friend. Yeah. Because, and you talk, like, one aspect I learned is, like, when you look at UFC fighters, and you look, because UFC is different from other sports because it's individual. Like, if you lose with a team, you're lose, it's a different type of thing, mentality but to, compared to losing by yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And you do have, like, coaches and everything, but you take the loss way more personally, right? But if you talk to these UFC fighters, like, if you listen to the podcast or interviews, and you hear the way they treat their mindset, it's like, obviously every UFC fighter thinks they're the best, all the UFC fighters think they're the best fighter ever, right? Because you have to have that mentality. Because yeah. it's like, what are you gonna say? Oh no, I think he can beat me, right? Like, you're, you can't walk around with that mentality because you're not gonna be the best. Yeah. It's still going, but yeah. You know what I mean? It's still, it's communication. Because like, even if you don't believe it for yourself, just say it, then maybe, maybe you'll fool yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I agree. Because you're not gonna see, when you see, you, like with weightlifting or any track and field, like with track and field, you see kids walking to the starting line. Like, I'm gonna do this. Like I'm gonna beat everyone. You're not gonna hear kids saying, "Maybe I'll go top five. Well, some kids do that, but maybe me. But like, you know what I mean? Like you go, you you do it to send it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you gotta believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. And like as cliche as that sounds, like it's I, it's a hundred percent true. Does you can either take it surface level, or you can really look into the things we're saying. I'd say, or like this type of talk, right? Yeah, like long form conversations are important. Like that, this is communication right now. Yes, so and I'm and like, f- and I major in this shit. Yeah, like no, no, there's no other like I, I guess, uh, <laughs> like setting, where you know people just have these conversations mm-hmm. and like most of the time people need either like a meal or like some drinks or yeah. like something else to have these sort of conversations. But like, but uh, used to say you can't just like pop oh, a table out in the middle die. of a park and just have a conversation. My batteries are. Eight. Like, I don't know, how to, because like, communication is such a big aspect. Like, if you know how to properly communicate, if you know how to t- tell the p- certain things in so- uh, certain scenarios, you're able to perform better in life. Because like, like news, right? Like news is a form of communication, and you might not you might not notice it, but they're only telling you certain things. But to uh, they're only telling you certain things to uh, t- tell a certain narrative. Because at the end of the day, news is funded by other co- private privatized corporations, and those privatized corporations have investments in other things, right? Like, yeah. something like that. But yeah, I just wanna say, communications, vital aspect in life. Yeah, it's like, you have a great ideas in your head and the only way to basically- Is communicate, share selling it, you have to, to be able to sell it. That. And like, if you don't know how to communicate that, then you're kinda of just screwed. Yeah, okay. I hate to end off the podcast, but my laptop's gonna die and like, it's at 7%. Thanks for having me on the pod. Oh, let's go. Uh, let's go. That's it. I don't know. I just want to say, like, keep an open mind. Mm-hmm. Have, have that growth mindset. Especially you live and you like learn. This. And uh, stay present. That's probably, yeah, so like, the biggest thing I can say. That, stay present. Okay, guys. YouTube. So follow my so Kuya Talks on YouTube. Give it a subscribe. I'm trying to make this my full-time hustle, maybe. Well, but, yeah. So, yeah, this is Kuya Talk.